Hey folks, it's Shane from Performance EV. Today we're going to start working on the radiators on our electric Porsche 911. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. So for those of you new to this channel, this is my little spot on YouTube where I put electric motors into fun and interesting cars. And today we're working on my Porsche 911. Uh, it's a 1998 996. Um, and you can see uh, up above, you'll see uh, some of my last videos on it and uh, help you get caught up if this is your first time here. So what are we doing today? So today we're going to focus on the radiators of this car. So while electric motors don't need a lot of the components that a combustion engine does, one of the things that they do both have in common is they both need cooling. So um, the temperatures involved might be slightly different, but ultimately they both need some way to cool down the key components. In my car's case, it's going to be the motor, the inverter, and the battery charger. I'm using Nissan Leaf batteries and they're not actively charged, actively cooled. So we're going to leave them not actively cooled. Um, currently, maybe I'll put in active cooling at some point in the, in the future. But yeah, we're going to ultimately need to be able to pump uh, coolant through those components, uh, take the heat away from them, pull it through the radiators, cool it down and get it back into them and just basically keep them at their, their optimum, optimal operating temperature. Now, in theory, if this car had been in good condition, that would be a pretty easy job because it would just involve, you know, plumbing in some new um, connections down towards the end of the car. Unfortunately, when I first got this car and went to do a service on it just to try and get it running properly before any of this EV conversion stuff started happening, uh, I found out that there was a crack in one of the, either the cylinder heads or the cylinder walls, which is basically letting um, coolant and uh, engine oil mix. And so that mixes both inside the engine and turns into basically like a milkshake inside the engine, chocolate milkshake kind of color. And it also mixes in the coolant system. So the cooling system for this car, the pipes, the um, radiators, and all the bits and pieces around that all have this brown sludge in them. Um, and uh, you can get it out with a lot of effort if you've got like the car running or if you can pump 100 degrees centigrade water with soap through the system for a, you know a few hours to try and just pump it pump out all the stuff and clean it on the inside. I don't have any of that, so I'm going with the other option, which is to replace everything. So I've got some new components, I've got some new, well, not brand new, but I've got some decent condition radiators, and we're gonna do, basically replace the whole, um, the whole system. But first job is gonna be the front. So I've removed the bumper, and now we need to get in and look at the, the detailed components behind that. All right, so we've got the bumper off, um, very simple, just a whole load of little screws holding it on basically. So um, there's about five or six on the bottom which attach to the various brackets and then there are two underneath the trim panel just at the very front, two in the space where the uh, indicator goes. So got that off, got it sitting on top of the car and now we're trying to take apart the um, the uh, heating cooling system. So there are five, five screws uh, holding this plastic kind of deflector in place. They're all Torx bits. So I've got that. Um, the last one down here, I don't know if you can see it, is just really in a bit of a painful place. So I'm having to go in with an Allen key version, which is never fun. But yeah, we're just going to get this off. So we need to take it apart, take out the um, components that are not working anymore and also take out any components we don't need and then we're gonna yeah clean everything up put in new parts that work and start to build out a new cooling system for the electric components so got the bumper off uh, that was wasn't too bad it's just a series of screws kind of hidden under things like the the indicators and, and all down the bottom now we're going to take off the kind of, I guess, air box, deflector, whatever channels the air in around the radiators. Uh, so we'll get that off 
and then go from there. All right, so we've got leaves everywhere. Um, this is your air conditioning condenser. Um, it's not looking terrible, but it's not looking in great shape either. So I'll probably replace these because they're not too expensive, but I'm not going to do that now because, well, we're going into autumn and there's kind of no, no real need for air conditioning at the moment. So I'm going to just disconnect it from the, um, from the heater uh, or from the radiator and just give it, let it hang loose and then we'll get the, the radiator off, put the new one in at the back and connect this back onto it. All right, so there's three 13 mil um, nuts and bolts that hold the frame into the car, which houses the um, the radiator. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and undo them all, and then we'll just kind of jiggle it out and uh, take it apart. Oh, you also need to undo this little uh, Torx bit so that the, uh, the wire is going to the fan can kind of come around this shroud. So I just wanted to show you what a tough life this car must have led. Uh, so this is one of the brackets. With, uh, plenty of lovely rust. And uh, this one is a little bit better, but not actually that far behind. So those are gonna be going to scrap and we're gonna replace them with some secondhand ones that I've sanded back and painted, which are now looking pretty good. So I also removed the central radi radiator. I'm not gonna actually replace that one because to be honest, I don't think the cooling needs of the motor and that an inverter are actually gonna need it. They're, you know, they will get hot, but the temperature they need to be down at is, is much, they're not gonna get hot, as hot as a, an internal combustion engine. But if you can see here, this is the reason why I can't really reuse um, any of these components. You can see that sludge that was um, caused by mixing of the coolant and the motor oil. Um, so that same gunk was in the in the engine which is kind of why it couldn't be used. Well, the the issue that caused this was why it couldn't be used. But yeah, that stuff's just disgusting and basically the whole system will need to be flushed multiple times to make it usable. I'd rather buy a uh, a decent used part that doesn't have this problem and just stick it in place. All right, so here we've got all the components of the front end of our um, cooling system. So we've got two radiators, one for each side with the fans attached. We've got the um, frames for holding them in place and the shrouds for diverting the air. So these radiators, they're not new, they're second hand, but they are much better than the old ones I had. A um, little bit of gravel damage down the bottom, but not too bad. The main thing is most of the fins are intact, so they should still be very efficient. Uh, most importantly, they've got no intermix in them. It's just anything I've poured out of them has just been water and coolant. So that is all good. Um, I have, as I said, fans attached. So one of these is new, one of these is from the car. Um, I had to get the new one because uh, the driver's side fan that was originally with the car, the resistor, which controls the speed for the, uh, when you put it on the low speed setting, um, that had blown um, blown up and it can be fixed and I might fix it to use it for a future project. But it, for this one, just to get things moving forward, it was as easy just to go with um, a secondhand replacement. I've fitted reducers. 
So this is to take it from the 32 mil, I think, that the original Porsche was at, down to the 19 mil that the Leaf and Tesla components operate at. And I'm gonna run basically the whole system on that 19 mil rather than reducing it down later. Um, yeah, so that's the components. We're just gonna put them together and get them into the car. All right, there we go. Radiator back in place with the AC condenser in front of it. Not a huge amount to see here, except the fact that it's all nice and shiny and new looking and will hold together as we get the car back on the road. So there we have it. We've got the new radiators in place um, and everything kind of more or less buttoned up. I do need to put the bumper back on and pointing upwards because it's sitting on the roof of the car. Um, and that will then be the, this kind of part of the front end sorted so the next step after that is we need to plumb this into the the rest of the components that are kind of in the car at the moment so we've got some heavy duty coolant hose here we've got 19 mil which will connect to the radiators to the components so that's going to be the charger up the front of the car uh, flow through that and then out of there and on to the uh, inverter and then back into the radiator here. And then we've also got some 10 mil here, which will basically be breather hose from the front all the way to the headers at the back. And then also it'll run teed into the, the 19 mil as well um, to let us uh, fill up the system and to ensure there's ex space for expansion. So yeah, that's how the system's gonna look. So. There, you know, there's a few next steps that will go alongside that. I'm going to be running this stuff down the length of the car. I've also got some um, cable for the charger, which is going to have to run front to back on the car as well. Um, so we'll kind of get all that stuff in place as well as the, the charger before really completely buttoning up the front and getting the being able to get the front subframe back in, the suspension back on and get the car rolling again. But yeah, plenty of exciting stuff ahead of us. I hope you've like this video and if you like this sort of content and want to see more of it please consider subscribing drop a like always appreciated and i try to respond to as many of the comments as i can um yeah but till next time thanks for joining us and we'll see you soon